You're listening to the After the Show Movie Podcast from ascully.com. Your weekly look at movies, video games, and more brought to you by your hosts, A. Scully and Sitor. We're addicted to movies. Are you? Good afternoon, listeners. Good afternoon, Sitor. Hello. Hell, you timed it just right. The air conditioner came on for your little sound test, and I'm sure everyone cares about that, but... I'll just cut that out. <laughs> and nobody will know. Nobody will know. It never <laughs> existed. The things that we do to make it sound nice. So, hello, Sidsuck. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm focusing on laying some pipes. And no, that's not a euphemism. That's what she said. I'm playing city skylines. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm laying all the pipes on my city that I cheat on because, of course, I use every cheat code and every mod that I can possibly use, so. Nice. So before the after the show discussion was not my game. It was kind of this movie and kind of nothingness. No, we were talking about the other, the the movie called The Predator True. from 2018. I had already blocked it out because I forgot that movie and then now I'm forgetting the conversation. I mean, there's good reason. I didn't forget forgot. it now because you showed me the trailer. So There's good reason you forgot that movie. I don't think I hated it as much as you apparently did. I hated it. Hate it. Because I love The Predator. I mean, if you walked in right now, I'd be like, dude, I'm so dumping Mr. Ace Coley for you. Yeah. So I'm all, I'm on board. Predator to me is like zombies. I'm on board. I'll try them all. Yeah, I get what you mean. You'll try yeah. the different. Yeah. Anybody that wants to come up with a new Predator story, I'll give it a go. All right. So it is Saturday, August the 6th. This is After the Show, number 748. We're a movie review podcast. Each week we look at a new movie. This week's movie is Prey. It's a 2022 movie. You can watch it now on Hulu streaming. If you are in the UK, it's on Disney+. Plus. It's rated R, and it's from 20th Century Studios, as they're now called. Sid Talk, give us the synopsis of Prey. Predator in 1719. All right, I'll give you the real one. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is, right? Yeah. The one off the box says, The origin story of the Predator in the world of the Comanche Nation 300 years ago. Naru, a skilled female warrior, fights to protect her tribe against one of the first highly evolved predators to land on Earth. That sounds very studio orientated. It sounds just like the back of a DVD box. And you know why? Because it is. <laughs> so, Sid Talk, you being the big fan of The Predator, what did you think of Prey? I think first you being a big fan of Dan Trachtenberg. Yeah, let's explain. Dan Trachtenberg is the director of this movie. And who is Dan Trachtenberg? Well, back in the days before podcasts really existed properly, there was a podcast called The Totally Rad Show. It was a video podcast, let's say. And they got together every week, reviewed pop culture things, movies, games, etc. There was three guys. One of them was Dan Trachtenberg. He went on to be a director. He, If you go back and watch those old Totally Rad shows, he... Mentions lots of times that he'd love to make movies. So the reason you're saying all this is because you've always been kind of sort of nerdy and you love listening to all those guys talk about tech and whatnot. And so you've kind of been a fan of his for a lot longer than him becoming a, f a film guy. Yeah, definitely. So, so what did you think of it? I absolutely love this uh, Prey movie. After that dog shit, The Predator from 2018, <laughs> I was a bit like, oh... Not more Predator. They're going to they're gonna just... It's going to be terrible. But I like this stripped-back version of a story of the Predator. I also like that it's... I think it works in a standalone way. You don't really even need to have seen the Predator. You could watch this and it'd be cool. Um, true. You don't need an explanation of who they are. I mean, it adds to it, I think, that we know more about them. I mean, everything is explained to you very, very clearly. Because she wants to be a hunter... All the men are hunters. And then she describes this thing as a hunter. So I think we get it. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the name of the movie is Prey. Yeah, it's a real stripped back story. I mean, there's not a lot to it. In fact, dialogue's pretty minimal, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of action sequences. 
I like the stripped back nature of it, and there's no like quippy one liners and silliness. Apart from, I thought some of the spoilers. There might be some spoilers in this review, so please go away if you've not seen it. Go and see it. It's cool. I felt like the French people were kind of like oh, cartoons. God. They were terrible. Terrible. Is that French? I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like they were, um, you know, cartoonish. Yes, when, it was crazy. Like, I wanted them to be threatening. I thought it was a cool idea for them to show up. Yeah, and they needed to be just nasty and cruel. I mean, they are, but they're just a joke. It was um, sad. Dan probably has seen the movie Apocalypto. That's the way you do it. I know that was done by a madman, that movie, but it's a great movie. I mean, we're not telling Dan how to make his movie. And when they show up in that movie, I really felt they were portrayed right. This one, it just felt like they came out of the Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> or like a cartoon, like we were making a movie about a cartoon version. Yes, so I wasn't into that. That was unfortunate. Because the rest of it I really enjoyed. You know, I enjoyed the, the setting. The 300 years ago thing is cool. America 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. Predators, I like their vibe. You know, we just want a, a challenge. We want to hunt some shit that is not easy. We're explaining what's going on by using the Native American tradition of the young men. Yeah. Traditionally leaving to go do their first big Hunt, literally kind of on the their same own. scenario right? yeah so we're just paralleling that this predator is just one of his own whatever he is some from wherever he is from and the thing is you have to go out into space find a planet find something and bring back proof that you have successfully hunted down something so it's the same exact thing i personally very much enjoyed it i thought it was really fun a fun predator standalone almost story what did you think what do you think I think? I think, I, I don't know, I, I couldn't sense it. I was thinking you didn't like it or something. Okay, so here's the deal. I appreciate that Dan is <laughs> making movies. I do. I love listening to him. I mean, I've only listened to him peripherally through you. A lot, you know, though. Accidentally, probably. you know. And I like the vibe. I love 10 Cloverfield Lane. However, okay, I'm very rarely kind of bored during movies. And there were some moments, and I can't even explain why, that I was just, maybe it's just my mood today, but I was kind of like in a lull of, I don't even know. So there are times when, okay, what we have is a lot less predator in this movie, right? The predator. And obviously we're talking about the prey. So we're focused on the young woman and the you know, Native Americans and the landscape. And now the French people are coming and killing all the buffaloes, all that stuff. It's just that I think I I didn't want more of the last movie because you hated it so much. <laughs> but I just felt like I need more contrast of what the Predator guy's doing versus what she's doing. And I kind of lulled for me at times. The performances at times were almost borderline. We're 17 and we're making a movie and everybody just say your lines and we'll just get on with it. It was actually really poor sometimes and I'm not trying to be horrible. I never noticed that. But it poor. really was. And then I also, you know, I'm just getting out all the negative here up front and then I'll tell you all the positive. I really despise that they're speaking English. I mean, it was a con constant disgruntled thing for me, like every time they talked. As soon as she started speaking English in the very beginning, I thought, oh, okay, well, if we're past like 1850, 1890, you know, cause sometime like that, wherever, you know, Europeans have come and they've learned English and this is just the way it is, then I could have accepted it. We're talking about 1719 here. <laughs> and these are people who still live out on the plains. They don't seem to be infected by the European invasion or anything yet, right? They're just doing their thing. So to have them speaking English... And having them speaking English in a modern sort of tone and with modern sort of mannerisms was, it was like I had to really get my mind off that to so, focus. But uh, then after all that. Let me explain about the speaking English. There's a separate version of this movie called the Comanche Cut. And it is all the dialogues, Comanche dialogue, and there's, you know, English subtitles. So. However. 
However, the actors are only some of them are speaking Comanche because they're not all Comanche. Right? right, so it's dubbed in Comanche. That some of them are dubbed. Inclu- the main lady is dubbed, apparently. I'm not saying that everyone has to be the thing that they're pretending to be when they're acting because I'm not on board with that philosophy necessarily. Maybe there are exceptions. However, in a movie, I mean, we watched another movie once a long time ago that was like supposed to be like in, it was, um, they were supposed to be speaking German all the time, but instead they just spoke English when in fact they could have all just been speaking German. I can't remember what it was. And it was really, it's just really distracting. I think it was. The one with Tom Cruise. Yes, yes, it was. Where he was supposed to be doing the plot Valkyrie. to go. Valkyrie. Yes. And every they started out. It was very bad. A few people kind of sort of spoke German. And then they, it's like they phased in English in the first few minutes. So to kind of eased you in. Yeah. And then you just had to accept that every single person was not just speaking perfect English, but no German accents or anything. I so, mean, there was some dodgy German accents also. I remember Kenneth Branagh was in it, and he was like... I don't remember his accent. I just remember, yeah. why are they speaking English? I mean, literally in Nazi Germany, and he's trying to pretend to be a Nazi, and we're all speaking English. So I guess that flooded back in my head, like, oh, I guess if... Is it for the audience purposes? Yeah. You know? It is. Because... That's unfortunate. Because they've tested people and audiences, and they <laughs> won't go and watch a subtitled movie. That's the problem. Right. I would so much rather watch a subtitled movie. Like, lower the dialogue if you must. Tell the story visually more and just let it... I don't know. But that was a bother to me. Everything else, however. I love the idea. I like the Predator. Oh, I forgot one more negative. CGI. Really, really bad a lot of times. Like, really, 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 really bad on the bear. I was like, oh, God. I had to almost like hide my eyes. I felt so bad. And then in the credits. Didn't have a problem with the bear. Oh my God, it looks so bad. Hmm. It was like this rubbery, weird, blobby, weird. And then it was just too severe. It's like they amped up the growling and the, I mean, I don't know what it's like to be attacked by a bear, but it seemed really over the top. It was very uncharacteristic of like the rest of the movie that's just trying to, you know, kind of tell the story. Almost grounded in reality, you know what I mean? Like, pretty well. But that was like, ugh. And then it was hopping around. Oh, it was just gross. After all that, I was along for the ride because I loved the Predator concept. I loved the setting. It looked gorgeous. There was a lot of good-looking scenes. Really good camera work, I think. I mean, the landscape is filmed in Canada. It, it looks really amazing. And I cared about the people, even though they had the cartoon French people I was almost instantly like on board with caring what was going to happen to this young woman and her brother. I didn't care about his friends because they were dickheads, but I was invested in how's this going to go with her. I thought she might be like a Rogue One situation. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Because it's the first time Predators come, apparently. There's no telling of that in the movie at all. There's no hint of that at all. But apparently someone who wrote the movie decided it's the first time the Predator has made it to Earth. That was in the synopsis, I think. It said one one of the first highly evolved Predators. One of the first. That this is the first time they've made it to Earth. I like it. And I also had flaws. Now, I like the action sequences. I like the Predator itself. Uh, They used a practical Predator mostly, right? It wasn't a CG dude. Maybe when it was running through the trees it was. Oh, yeah. But it was a dude in a suit. Another poor CGI moment there, too. And I love the Predator, the look of him, and it's very menacing, but I didn't get a good scale. Yes, he picked the bear up over his head. Yeah. But I still want the Predator to seem like he's 10 feet tall, and if he is, I want to have it so, like, oh, shit. He just looked a little bit like a guy in a rubber suit at times. One thing I enjoyed about this version of the Predator is he had some of the technology, but he wasn't fully tooled up. He was, you know, the infrared vision that you're very familiar with in all the movies. It was almost like a 1.0 version because it didn't have all the proper... True. The hood wasn't working fully. True, true. I guess it was like a basic one. He didn't have the uh, rockets that come out of his arms that fire and blow people up. Not that we saw, no. Not that he utilized. <laughs> <laughs> if he would have had those, I guess the movie would have ended quicker because he would have just blown everybody up, right? So True. Maybe he thought it was easy, this place, so he came with not everything. What I need is a movie that now set, shows us, like, um, from their point of view, they find out that this first dude made it to this planet and they've, they've never been to before, and now they really need to tool up 
because the creatures on that planet, you know what I mean? Like, well, they did kind of sequel it, bait it a little bit at the end there, didn't they? True. <laughs> if you stay during the credits, something happens there, which it looks like they might be angling for something else, which could be exactly what you just talked about. In fact, that would be a good way of approaching it, right? Yeah, to figure out the evolution of the Predator and why they're different when they are coming back later. Or their brother just fell. So True. They, they come, like, maybe the day after and deal with this same bunch of people, including Nauru. Ah. But it's from their side rather than hers. But you know her because you've seen her in the yes. last movie. I think that'd be a cool way of approaching That would be it. interesting. There you go, Dan. Take that one. And for please free. have subtitles. I don't want the aliens speaking English. <laughs> Well, you can watch that Comanche version of this movie, and maybe you would like that better. Um, not if it's dubbed, no, because I feel like that's a cheap. Maybe way it's out. dubbed very well. Who knows? No, it wouldn't be dubbed well. There is no dubbed well. You know how I am about pat bad looping. If the mouth doesn't match the words, it drives well, me. Well, let's say if it's only one or two people who got looped, you might not be so bad. Because, like I said to you earlier, this movie doesn't have a ton of dialogue. It does yet. not. You're right. Yeah, so it might work. I really loved it, and you. Saw a lot of flaws, but enjoyed it overall. I did enjoy it overall, yes. I liked it much better than Jurassic World Dominion, let me say. Oh, you did. You made it very... You said you'd watch, a, watch it 10,000 times, this one. Then over and over. That one again. Instead of that one <laughs> once, yeah. Oh my god, that's funny. All right, let's get on to the cast. Amber Midthunder plays Nauru. We know Amber from Legion. Well, I do. You'd forgot. I'd forgotten. But she was like a mutant in Legion, and she was really cool. What do you think of her hair? Very good. I mean, again, the leaving all the modern affectations and English, and there's a certain not hardness about her, all of her performance and her mannerisms and all that. That would be my only complaint because I, I thought she'd handle it very well. There's definitely her character. There's a modern edge to everything about her. Like she. Yes. Because she's like. She's a bit too cool for this. Yes. You know, she looks perfect most all the time. Yeah. The look of all the stuff is very like we're going to a living encampment to show you what Native Americans lived like kind of appearance. You know what I mean? Like a living history place. Yeah. It's not like the Northman that we watched. <laughs> like they committed to like making it grimy and stinky and everybody's disgusting. She was almost like a supermodel in the middle of a tribe. To be fair, almost everyone was. There weren't a lot You're of right. like, natural looking nice, people yeah. in this movie. So we've got Dane Delaregro as the Predator. Well, we can't really say about... He didn't act. Or did he? I he mean, was... there's reactions and movement in the costume, outfit, whatever it's called. And yet, yeah, it's it was a little too people-y for me sometimes. we got Stormy Kip as Wasapi. That's the bad, guy, the bad guy in the tribe, let's call him. He's oh, kind of, he's kind of sexist. Yeah. yeah, they throw a bit of that in there, which seemed a little weird also. It was a bit forced. You know what? You could just say, fuck it. If you're making a movie nowadays, you're writing a story, just say, fuck it. I'm not going to address any like social stuff. That I'm just not. This is my movie. I'm going to have this young woman just be a warrior in the tribe, and it's not even going to be a thing. It's just not a fucking thing. I get it. I'm not making a documentary. This isn't me telling you the history of the world. This is me just telling a story. And I'm not going to address anything that we're all hung up on, you know, like things about our shitty behaviors. I'm just going to do it. But in this one, we have to kind of force the idea that the men of the tribe think that she needs to just stay home and cook. Yeah. Her task is to gather medicinal herbs and flowers and stuff during the day. And she makes it, she acts kind of like that's just beneath her, which is kind of shitty, to be honest, but. But yeah, it's it's kind of shoehorned in like a statement of some kind. Mm -hmm. And I was like, eh, I don't know about that. Dakota Beavers plays her brother, Tabe. I liked right. him. Tabe. He's a first time actor, actually. Yeah, I liked him. And a lot of these people in this movie are from real tribes. I mean, even Amber Myth Thunder is, actually. Right. I'm interested to see what that Comanche cut. I'm interested to see whether it does come across right or it's really looks weird like an old mm. like a you know when you watch like a kung fu movie and it's really weird looking i don't know if we're the ones to judge it 
necessarily like, unless it's just really I feel like I could tell whether it looked authentic or not. So directed by Dan Trachtenberg, we mentioned him earlier, 10 Cloverfield Lane. You know what? I feel like 10 Cloverfield Lane is one of those special occasions where the sequel is better than the original movie. I don't know. I liked I liked um, Cloverfield. And he also directed the pilot first episode of The Boys, oh. which we're actually watching right now, season three. And he also had a Black Mirror episode, if you remember, the one about video games, which I really enjoyed. I did not remember that. Yeah, so Dan's done a few things. What did you think of this directing here? I think we mentioned really earlier, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, I do. I again, it. I like the way it looked. I like, it's just the, some of the pieces, like the few of the performances, the CGI. It wasn't really telling me the, not the story, but I mean, as a Predator person. I'm fully aware. Maybe I shouldn't look at it that way, but I just wanted more of like that aspect of it. All right. IMDb reviews. These are the people on IMDb who give this movie one star, similar to, well, Sitar wouldn't give this one star. No, I would not. All right. So these are the people who really hated this movie and gave it a one star. And we read that because we find them funny. Unless we agree with them. Then we, <laughs> then we go... Oh, yeah, that's right. I get what you're saying. All right, so this first guy says, woke garbage. Of course. There's usually always somebody who says that. So this one says, there are plenty of reviews where people explain all the wokeness that gushes out of this movie. I still think what makes me the most angry is how in this day and age of limited knowledge, the filmmakers didn't take two seconds to do historical research. The film takes place in 1719. Yet there are guns with rifled barrels, both of which weren't invented for another century. <laughs> Honestly, I can't get over the toxic male agenda and the five foot, 120 pound woman who is stronger than all the men. The writing is freaking lazy. She's not stronger than all the men. You're just using, you're just She's projecting your own insecurities. Smart. What she has are a few skills. She gets the shit knocked out of her by the men, but the tricks and things that she learns to do with her, what she does have, average size young woman, she does it fine. It is not unconvincing because she doesn't just like whoop their ass. You know what I mean? Like it's, I just find those comments like you're just whining. All right. Second guy says, Arnold, a muscular man and his crew used all modern weapons to fight and kill a predator, and even lost most of the crew. This movie is an absolute disrespect. A female who can't even kill a bear takes down a predator. What a joke. She did have some help. We didn't establish that she couldn't kill a bear. She didn't kill the lion because she fell off a tree and bashed her head. What's wrong with these people? Are they watching the same movie? When she took down the predator, she had a lot of help from her brother. Yes. Yes. I mean, not help, but like they did it together for sure. They but it, together, it wouldn't have yeah. happened if she didn't do what she did. So, and the final person says, it's insulting. This is supposed to be a Predator prequel. At least get a proper cast and not a bunch of nobodies. The plot is thin and predictable. I miss summer blockbusters. So that's that guy. Boo hell. All right. Extras. We didn't see any. It's on streaming on Hulu. And there are plenty of interviews with Dan Treitzenberg on YouTube, which I just found. But because he was like in a junket this week where the, everybody gets five minutes to ask him questions, you have to kind of sift through them all to get more than three questions because everybody asks the same thing. Sure. Nobody asks decent questions. <laughs> so, yeah, you can do that. Make your own extras. That's what I say. In conclusion, Prey, I'm going to give Prey a seven out of ten. Nice. That's it's very high praise. Praise. See what I did there? Yes. Never do it again. I'm going to have to give it a five because it's good uh, for me. Is that less than Jurassic Park Dominion? No. Jurassic Park Dominion got a four point oh, okay. something. Well. Average is just average. I am I was interested. I like the topic. It looked nice. All the good stuff, but it's just right in the middle. I won't seek it out if I'm ever doing like a Predator marathon. I mean, I'll include it, but I'll be like, mm, there's that one too. Ah, no offense to anyone, but that's how I'll approach it. I would approach it as watch this. I would watch this one over that The Predator every time. I heard someone told me that. Thank you, 
to Hulu for letting us watch this movie. Next week, we're going to look at Lightyear, which is the new Pixar movie starring Buzz Lightyear. How about that? <laughs> movie recommendations. I'm going on the tip of this movie, Prey. I'm going to give you a 10 Cloverfield Lane. I do think it's better than Cloverfield. It won't make you feel sick with the crazy camera movements. True that. It's pretty insane how much the camera moves in the original Cloverfield. I don't remember that, but I probably commented on it at the time. You definitely did. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, this isn't Predator related, but it is in a weird way. Uh, the original Alien, Ridley Scott, an awesome sci-fi movie. And there, there was obviously a crossover between Alien and Predators. Mm -hmm. I would always Would recommend... you like to tell them what it is? What? The crossover. Yeah. Not the movie. No, the original... The original reason yes. everybody freaked out was that in which one? Predator 2. Right. In Predator 2, what's his face makes it onto the ship. And in the trophy case. There's is... a trophy case and there is one of our, what are they called? Xenomorph. Xenomorph. And if you know, I mean, it was just like an Easter eggy thing, right? But most people who are into sci-fi noticed it and you're like, oh they've crossed over and then they made a whole movie about it. I mean, it's a pretty good idea because these, these predators want to hunt something that is hard to hunt, right? Correct. And what's if, harder than one of them? Yeah, and if they kill a freaking one of them, we got no <laughs> chance. We got no chance. Exactly. So Alien, 10 Cloverfield Lane, yours are? Mine are going back to the 90s as I've been doing for the last uh, whole of this particular year. So my recommendations are five movies from the 90s. I think I'm in 1994. Five-ish? Yes. Is that a question? Is a question. Now it's a comment. I'm in 1995. To Die For, with Nicole Kidman. Dr. Cat's Professional Therapist, not a movie, but a TV show. Kind of a precursor to my Bob's Burgers. Batman Forever. Apollo 13. And Judge Dredd. All, you know, totally watchable. Oh, that's the uh, Sylvester Stallone Judge Dredd, right? Correct. And there was another one where Cal Urban played him. Oh, right. Yeah, but did he say the C word all the time? Probably. <laughs> <not>. <laughs> so uh, that's our movie recommendations. This week, I've been playing a couple of games. And the first game that I played is called South of the Circle. It's on the PlayStation 5. It's also on all the other platforms. It's one of those choose-your-own-adventure type games, which are becoming more and more popular. You've seen these, uh, Sid Talk, lots of them. Telltale Games started it, but the South of the Circle is... It's got some of the best voice acting I've ever heard in a game, to be fair. It's really good. It's a British-made game, it sounds like. And it's about, well, you open the game and you're in a plane. You've not crash-landed, but you've had to come down because it's out of fuel, you and a, this dude. And it turns out, you know, you have to go out and figure out what's going on. And it's snowy. You're in the Antarctic or the Arctic or somewhere. You don't know where you are. And you go wandering off and you find this base where these researchers were and they're all not there. And it starts to uncover this mystery. And it's to do with like the Russians, the Cold War. It's around that era. And most of the story is told in flashback to you because you're a university professor. And it goes back to you in London at college and kind of like your first proper relationship with a woman. And you meet this lady. And that whole relationship plays out during the flashback sequences. And the present day sequences are you in this predicament where you've gone down and there's a mystery unfolding as why a college professor is where he is. Let's just say he's in Russia. You know what I'm saying? Okay, it doesn't sound super fascinating to me because I'm in a spy ship, but hey. It's very well voice acted, let me say. And I did play the whole thing in one sitting. It was about two hours long, like a movie. I did come away unsatisfied by the ending. Ah. But the journey to the ending I really enjoyed, especially the relationship that was brewing between them. Because I thought it was going one way because it's a, a game. And I was like, there's probably going to be like a, a huge thing about this. But it's more really about this college professor meeting this lady having this relationship and it kind of bleeding into his work a bit. Mm. And there's also a bit of, because it's set, takes place in the 60s, there's also a bit of women shouldn't be doing that. They mm. should be cooking kind of thing like this movie was doing. 
me as him, playing as him and being able to do the choices, I was really sticking up for her. Well, it's good that you were there to save the poor thing. It was, yes. Mm. So Good for me. <laughs> so that's South of the Circle, and that's available now. The other game I played this week is called Endling Extinction is Forever. Now, this one is a almost cartoon-looking, like uh, cel-shaded, and you play, you play a fox, and the beginning of the game, you're a fox, and you go into the... Is it a warren? Is that what a fox lives in? Do not know. The hole that a fox lives in. You go in there. You lie down. You have some babies. And then the rest of the game, I haven't finished this one yet, but I have been playing it. It's really nice to look at. Is the responsibility of being this fox parent and having these little cute babies. You know, you have to survive yourself and also feed the babies so you've got to go out every day. You go out of the warren. Sometimes you take them with you. Sometimes you leave them there. There are humans around. There are badgers. Things that would eat small little babies. Mm-hmm. So you've got to go out, get food, bring it back, raise the babies, level the babies up almost kind of thing. And oh, wait, sto- are there babies in this game? And there's a story going on about, it seems to be about how humans suck and like they're not very good with nature. You're supposed to be custodians of nature, yet we just kill everything mm. and smash all the land up. And More messaging. Great. Yeah, but it's told through the eyes of this fox, and it's it's not... It does look cartoonish, but it's not cutesy. It's like a real-looking fox with motion capture. It's really cool. It's called Endling Extinction is Forever, and it's on PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox, Switch, I believe. It's on everything. And I really, I'm enjoying it so far. It's like a survival game, but you're a fox. Very nice. Sito, what's for dinner? Well, it's up to debate. Could go out and get something, probably mod pizza. However, I also have corn, which is a brand, Q-U-O-R-N. Patties with like the mozzarella cheese and pesto inside and some potatoes and a vegetable. Which of those do you prefer? Um, today, pizza, I think. I think you're right, and this sounds a lot simpler, except I have to go get it, unless I can get free delivery. We'll see see if I can manage that. And the reason we're telling you what we eat is because we're vegetarian and everything. everybody thinks we sit around and eat, like, a carrot and a I mean, we lettuce do. every day. Oh, I would be happy to eat carrot and lettuce every day. I would be much less of a round middle-aged woman, <laughs> more of a thin middle-aged woman, but no, I like carbohydrates, so I'll eat five pounds of potatoes and some ice cream and a cake instead of some days a carrot and some lettuce. But today? I don't think I've ever seen you eat five pounds of potatoes. (laughs) That's a lot of potatoes. Do you realize? Well, you've only known me, what, since 1999? That's true. So (laughs) Since 1999, you've never sat and ate five pounds of potatoes. Not that I know of. Uh, I don't know. Let me think. (laughs) Maybe not five. I mean, that is a lot of potatoes. It isn't really. That's the whole bag. Yeah, I've eaten a whole bag of potatoes before. You've definitely not since I've known you. Maybe not since I've known you. I put you off your potato addiction. (laughs) No. (laughs) I'll just supplement by having potato (laughs) with bread and another starch and another starch. I do like potatoes on bread. Yeah, excellent. Well, see, we could have potatoes on bread. Like fries, you know, like chips sandwich. Oh, I'm not making that. Okay. (laughs) Yes. Very well. We will have mod pizza. All right. So what else? My advice? Is that what you're asking for? My advice? Just what else? My genius advice? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was just thinking the other day, I hear people like being snotty when you're, when you're satisfied with your life. Like I've sort of earned my life. I've worked my job for many years. I've, you know, make an income. I pay my taxes. I do all the shit. And so I have my life the way I like it. I am not an ambitious person. I'm not a person who needs to have a higher position. I don't need, I don't want necessarily to sacrifice my, like my efforts in a direction just to make more money. I just don't have that. I'm fine. I mean, I did what I did to get to where I am and I'm like, Oh, this is it. I'm icing on the cake is here. We're good. More cake, talk, more cake, (laughs) more carbohydrates. But people have a tendency to kind of try to make you feel like shit. Because you're satisfied. Like, oh, don't you want a better position than that? Oh, you've been driving your car for a long time. 
Oh, you guys haven't bought a different house? Oh, you live over there, over there in that area? Oh, right, right. Oh, you haven't remodeled your house? All this shit. You know, it's like (laughs) passive aggressive bullshit that I have actually lived 54 years of life, come to many different choices and decisions and conclusions. And in this moment, I am satisfied and happy. That doesn't mean, oh, if you want to hand me a million dollars, I wouldn't take it because that's stupid. Don't be an idiot. What I'm saying is I don't have this constant urge for more. I don't need more. I don't need to like ensure that a year from now, when I retire, hopefully a year and a half from now, when I retire that, oh my God, I want to make sure that we have $40 a week to be sure we buy the special fucking sugar that we like. I don't give a shit about that, right? That's expensive Um, sugar. (laughs) That's more expensive than, than what I buy, but... I don't need to maintain anything more than what actually gives me complete satisfaction in the moments I'm alive. Like, I just don't. But people, and there's a culture of it, that's like, oh, either like, oh, so you couldn't manage to get more patting on the head, or what's wrong with you? You don't want more? Like, there's something broken in your brain. You haven't been brainwashed thoroughly to think that, Your used car that you've driven since 2011, you think that's good enough? What if it breaks down? Oh, fucking fix it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't don't need to buy a new fancy car to make me feel anything. It will make me feel nothing. Like, it will be nothing to me. So if you have your life the way you actually enjoy it, and aside from terrible things that might be happening, I get that. There could be, there's always sad things and terrible things and the world is terrible. I get that. But I mean, if you look around and the chair you're in and the table you sit at and the food that you eat and the person that you're with, there's a nod to you. Hey, thanks. And just like, you know, my holy socks and my cheap underwear and my clothes that have paint on them and my 20 mismatched gardening containers. It's thrilling. That life is thrilling to me. It's more than just good. So don't try to sell me your bullshit just because you are lacking or because you've bought into the whole thing of like, must have more, 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 and then die. Like, that's kind of the end of everybody's story. So, you know, if that's your trajectory, you go for it. But if it's not, then hop off that that train and just chill. Very nice. (laughs) Well put. Wasn't it? That was a good one. To the point. It was not to the point, but you you catch what I'm throwing. I get it. All right, so aschoolie.com is the place you can go to listen to this podcast. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are social media networks that we are on. You can also go to anchor.fm slash after the show, Spotify, Amazon Music, anywhere that podcasts are available. Email feedback to me, aschoolie.com. Do not email Sid Talk at whatever our email address is that you probably could guess. And... (laughs) Stay classy, the Predator. I'm sure you'll be back because, of course, you'll be back. Let's just call him Predator, the way Pred, you like it. Pred. Hey, Pred. Yo, P. There we go. P <laughs> dog. And I am going to say, think for yourself, or someone is definitely going to do it for you. <laughs> <laughs>